statement from Coach Oates. Then go to your questions when we do. Again, you can use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. And when you're called on, please state your name and media affiliation first. Coach, before we go to those questions, please give us a brief opening statement. I mean, really happy for our guys. It's been a long time. So they've played in the Sweet 16 years, so these guys have really bought into playing the right way. You know, and I think, you know, defensively, we've been one of the top five teams in the country, uh, you know, all year. But, I, uh, you know, the offense was bound to come. So I just told them after the uh, first game, you know, let's just lose ourselves in the game, lose ourselves in the blue-collar stuff and the defensive stuff. I, uh, I reached out to uh, – Coach Patino, after the Iona game, I actually talked to him this afternoon. I wanted to get his thoughts on us. He told me the same thing. He said every uh, Louisville, Kentucky team he had, the the hardest game was the first one. He referenced the San Jose State game when they were a thirty six point favorite. And it was a one point game at the half, and you know he just told his guys they got enough talent that it's going to come. You know, come just focus on defense. I, it's been what I'd been telling our guys, but I, I told them. Coach Patino said the same thing. I'm gonna shoot. He's a Hall of Fame coach, won a couple national championships. I think he knows what he's doing. So I, I just said, like, let's do that. You know, you look, and P Petty, you know, won the blue collar last game. He's playing really hard. He's he's just way too talented to not have a good game here pretty quick. So he led the team plus minus with 19. You know, he had 20 points, shot four and nine from three. Shaq had 21, five, eight from three. So can't say enough about those guys. You know, Quinterly comes off the bench and, has nine assists in the first half, ends the game with 14 and 11. So, you know, a lot of guys stepped up. You know, in the SEC player of the year, Herb only, uh, you know, has six points and six rebounds in 17 minutes and can't stay out of foul trouble. And we were stable, still able to do what we did. So, you know, that just kind of shows what everybody else uh, had going today. So. Okay, thank you for that, Coach. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Remember, you can use the raise hand function to indicate if you want to ask a question. And our first one will come from Michael Casagrande with AL.com. Michael, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. And it looked like you guys uh, quite an emotional release at the end uh, or when Petty hit those two threes right in a row right in front of the bench. It looked like you almost gave him a hug or a high five when he was running by. What was that moment like to, to, to have that? see him go through those those uh, struggles and then make those shots I mean I've just been talking to him I think he's just been all about the right stuff for you know for the majority of the year you know these last two three months and he deserved to play better than what he had played you know and I think he was putting a lot of pressure on himself and I just felt like he, he could use a shot to go through a couple back to back you know it was huge I was happy for him and Excited for him, and you know, hopefully this gets him on a roll here. So, I, uh, I you know, he just he's been playing super hard. He just, you know, for whatever reason, he wasn't making shots. So, he's making shots now. That's the uh, John Petty we all know. So it's good, good to have him back. Okay, thank you, Michael. Next, we'll go to Drew Carter with CBS Forty Two. Drew, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Nate, you guys give yourself another week in the bubble there in Indianapolis. Uh, what do you think about spending another week in the quote unquote controlled environment? How are you planning to spend the time? We got to figure out something to do to spend our time. We, uh, I told the guys, you know, most mentally tough team may come out of this thing. So we're going to get out. I got out and enjoyed the uh, outdoors a little bit today. I mean, I, if, before today, I'd been here a week. I'd been outside one time outside of getting on a bus and getting off. So we had a couple of the guys go out. Maybe we'll make it mandatory. Maybe we'll get a little softball game going. I don't know, something. They they uh, they let us go over to Victory Field. That's nice. Uh, I'll tell you what, the food's been great. The first day was a little struggle. After that, it's been good. Our uh, nutritionist, Amanda, has been great supplementing what they – but the, the hotel food's been good and the meals we got there, and then she supplements it with some snacks and some other meals. And I told I, – shoot, I, I put on like 10 pounds since I've been in the bubble, so <laughs> – I need to hurry up and get out of the bubble. Uh, hopefully it's a couple more weeks, but, you know, I might need to start uh, disciplining myself with the with the eating in the bubble and get a little bit more exercise, one of the two. But we'll, we'll figure out what to do with the players. They, we've got our uh, academic coordinator, Brittany, with us. She's 
she'll be on him with some academic stuff and we'll watch a lot of video, we'll get them in the gym, spend some time in the gym and try to make sure their legs are fresh. They, they've been playing cards. I, uh, I got to learn how to play spades. Uh, it's not like my card, my card game of choice, but I think by the end of the week, maybe I'll know how to play spades, but we, we will probably do a little something other than that too. Thanks for your question, Drew. Next, we'll go to Tyler Martin with Bama Central. Tyler, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Coach. Primo made his return. Didn't really look like he missed a beat. Uh, 23 minutes, 10 points. Uh, just, you know, how big was his return to the lineup for you guys tonight? I thought he was huge. You know, we needed big guards. They had those big guards that they post a lot, and he's 6'6", 200 pounds, athletic, and with length. You know, I thought his minutes were huge for us. You know, he had that you know, he's two or four from three. He's been, he's been working too. Like, I mean, he hadn't been able to go live in practice, but he's been shooting a lot and he's a confident kid. He works hard. That tip dunk was what got me going though. Like showed his athleticism a little bit. So I think maybe that would give him a little bit of confidence. He was all up on the rim on that. And they went to the zone and he crashed, got to the old boards. He, he's, I mean, we got really good kids and he's as good a kid as it comes. So I, I was happy to see him play well in his first game back after that injury. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Our next question will come from Cecil Hurt with the Tuscaloosa News. Cecil, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, Coach, could you give us an update on Jordan Bruner? Why, why couldn't he start? Why couldn't he really go tonight? I mean, is it still the knees just didn't come around after the first game? Yeah, I mean, he's not as athletic as he was before the knee surgeries. And we, uh, you know, they – they're starting Scott, who's essentially like a three slash four at the five. So it wasn't that he couldn't go. We just, and me and him talked last night. I mean, he's a smart kid. He sat in my room and told me like, coach, I'm a, you know, basketball mind. I think, you know, he said, look, Hey, we talked about the matchups. You know, I th we thought Galen Smith would be a better matchup for him. Well, they only played Galen four minutes. So it was hard to get uh Bruner those mat, those minutes, you know, we, we thought Reese and Bruner could match up when they had Galen in a little bit better. But, you know, when Scott was in, we liked the uh, Juwan Gary matchup a little bit more. So we changed it up. I mean, you know, Charlie was in the NBA for five years. He talked about when the Golden State Warriors were rolling and they had starting lineup, they switched it for the finals. I mean, you got at this point, you do what you got to do to win the game. Bruner's a team guy. He's all about whatever it takes for the team to win. Obviously, he'd like to play a lot more minutes because he's a really good player. But we built this thing on getting stops and guarding and we didn't think the matchup was good. And he got beat on the one blow by there, you know, because with the way they run their offense, there are a lot of five out and there's a lot of switching that, that was uh, going on with kind of their different actions. So it wasn't even just necessarily that one matchup either. It was get switched on to some of those guards where we felt like Juwan was a little bit more able to stay in front of those. So uh, we, we played Juwan a lot. We played Herbert to five some. You know, if he would have stayed out of foul trouble, he probably would have played a few more minutes at the five. But we just – we like the matchup a little bit better. Okay, thank you, Cecil. And next, we'll go to Joseph Goodman with AL.com. Joseph, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Uh, congratulations, Nate. I'm wondering how someone could gain 10 pounds in the bubble. What's your favorite bubble snack? Thanks. No idea. Like uh, Amanda gets these guys smoothies every night, so I, I, I've been. She had them like a pot belly, uh, a pot belly Oreo milkshake with a cookie. After I had a pot belly uh, sub, I, like she, it's literally like every three hours there's like a new meal popping up, and we we the staff does this little like, kind of fat loss weight loss contest from like January till the uh, week of the SEC tournament. So I. I go all in, you know, we try not to get too out of shape during the year by doing this contest. So the, we weighed in that Monday before the SEC tournament, and I was down as low as I'd been since last year before the SEC tournament. So now it's – I'm just putting it all back on in the bubble. So it's all, it's all bad right now. I, I got I to gotta get myself back on some discipline here. But after after we're, we're done with the season, I'll, uh, I'll get back on the discipline here. Right now I'm trying to lock in to watch some <laughs> – plus when you're watching video late at night, and there's just available snacks everywhere. You, you gotta be, I gotta be a little bit more disciplined, but right now I'm just worried about watching video, making sure our team's ready to go, making sure they're uh, in a good spot. I, I might, I can get myself together later. 
Next question from Tony Sukalis with Bama Insider. Tony, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, Nate, there was a time when, you know, when Herb got his second foul, you guys had a six point deficit. You were able to kind of respond with like a 19 to four run. Just how big was that? You kind of seemed like you gained control after that. Yeah, and I, I mean, it was kind of weird that we made the run without Herb because he's such an integral part of what we do. But, you know, I thought guys stepped up. You know, Primo was good. Quinterly was good. Keon Ellis was good. You know, we were able to do this without Herb in the game a lot. So, you know, we, I think we went on two 19 to four runs. What, there was one in the first half. Then I think we opened the uh, second half on a 19 to four run. So Herb was involved there for part of the second half. But even at that, you know, he got his third foul fairly quick and had to come out. So, you know, Quint Quintley has been playing well. I mean, shoot, our, our runs obviously were fueled by offense and defense both tonight. You know, and when Quinterly was in, the offense was flowing. I mean, they couldn't stay in front of him. He got in the paint you know, 11 assists and, you know, nine assists in the first half. You know, he was a big part of that 19-4 uh, to four run. Okay, thanks, Tony. Time for just a, a couple of final questions. We will go to Drew Arman from WZZK. Drew, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Yes, Coach. I just wanted to ask you about Alex Reese once again. A lot of production off the bench. He was able to, you know, once again shoot the three well, gave you double figures. And, uh, and just and talk about also uh, just the bench as a whole. I mean, uh, they played with a lot of energy, and I thought with the key against Maryland, you didn't have a lot of depth. I thought Reese was great. I mean, he's been great both games. Shot two or two from three. Last game, three or five now. He's five or seven in the NCAA tournament. You know, he sh showed up. But we And we talked about it. We looked at – we were four and seven in uh, one or two possession games last year. So we looked at every single, I think we picked 12 games. There was one more, the Kentucky game ended up being more than two possessions, but it was close. It was a one possession game with a minute, some change to go. So we looked at those 12 games. And, and one thing that kept recurring was Reese made big shots in some of those late games last year when uh, we needed him to. So kind of our mindset, what I thought, you know, Reese, you know, steps up in some big moments. Well, I think he's stepping up in big moments now. I and mean, the NCAA tournament can be a little overwhelming for some people. It's obviously not for Reese. Thought at the end of games last year, he was big for us. I think he's been big for us in the NCAA tournament. Really happy for him because I think his attitude's been great all year. You know, I addressed that with the team because a couple guys didn't play very many minutes tonight that usually play a lot more minutes. You know, Herb didn't get nearly as many minutes because of foul trouble, Bruner, uh, Rojas. I said, you know, Reese – had a lot of games where he didn't play nearly as many minutes as he wanted during the year. He kept his attitude great all year. And look at what he's doing now when season's on the line, the NCAA tournament, he's playing his best basketball of his career, in my opinion. So really happy for Reese, you know, I mean, he had 13 and five and 16 minutes and shoots three or five from three. I mean, he's hit big, th those two threes he hit against Iona were huge. I mean, he's, he's playing well for us. Okay. And finally, we'll go to Steve Moulton with WZZK. Steve, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Coach, uh, congratulations uh, on the win. Uh, a, a couple of things, if I could. I, I did ask Herb uh, after the first game how he'd grade that game. He said he'd give you give him a C. I do wonder what kind of grade you'd give your team this time in particular. And, and one other question I did have was about the technical foul to JQ. What kind of explanation did you get on that? Well, the, he talked to the other kid. He hit the three and said something to the other Tim kid. So JQ said the other kid said something to him first and started it. Well, typically it happens that the second guy always gets hit with the tee. The referees had warned us earlier in the game, no talking. And, I, and when you're in the NCAA tournament, everything's a little more on alert. Everybody's, all the officials are getting evaluated, all that. So we had explained to our guys before the tournament about it. We had to re-explain it to them early in the game when the referees warned us. And then, so when it happened, the referees had warned us. Like, you know, I, I wasn't very happy with uh, JQ. We're trying to win the game, and he puts him in the free throw line before the game was over. So I thought he played great. He just needs to be a little smarter and just beat him on the scoreboard. We don't have to talk when we beat him. Just beat him on the scoreboard and play well. So the, uh, the first question, um, giving a grade to the game, I mean, look, defensively, uh, we were a 1.17. I'm looking at the HTI box score right now, our analytics company, which was not where we needed to be. Our goal was like a 1.0. So defensively, I didn't think we were very good. 
So we're not going to give it an A. I mean, offensively, we looked great. We uh, we were 1.48, which is outstanding. So it was nice the offense came around. I looked on Kim Palm. I think we jumped from 38 to 27 in the country in one game. So that's how good the offense was. So maybe a B. If our defense would have been uh, where it needed to be, it would have been an A. But we got to get both sides of the ball going. So hopefully against UCLA, we can get the defense back and keep the offense rolling as well. Well, Nate, really appreciate